Yo, what's going on guys? My name is Slade. I hope everyone is having a great day so far because today I am bringing you the first ever Pirate 101 video of its kind. As you can already tell by the thumbnail, this is going to be a complete level 1 through 70 gear and questing guide for the game. I'm basically going to be going over some tips that are very important to know while questing through the game as well as showing you what I think is the best and most important gear from levels 1 through 70 for all pirate classes. Just something to keep in mind is that this is not the end all be all way to quest and you do not have to get every single piece of gear that I mentioned in the video. This is just what I think is an efficient way for new and even experienced players to quest up through the game. There will be timestamps for every single topic covered in the video so if you want to skip ahead to a certain level then feel free to do so. And also, if you guys find this video helpful at all, a like and a sub would be greatly appreciated. So, with all that behind, let's go ahead and jump straight into the video. Alright, so before I really even get into like level 1, I want to go over some of the like basic things you kind of should know like before you even start questing. First thing being, uh, right when you make your character, you're going to have to make some background selections that actually directly impact your character and the companion that you get. So, starting with the parent's death, you're going to see a graphic like this. And it's going to give you five options, um, one of them being Mutiny, which gives you the companion Dead Mike. One of them being Shipwrecked, which gives you Lucky Jack Russell. You have Armada, which gives you D Gaspard Devol. You have Storm, which gives you Milo Greytail. Squid Attack, which gives you Burgess Latcher. Those are the five uh, options that you have. And each of these companions you get um, when you get to the Presidio quest, which is a dungeon around level 10-ish, I, I would say. Um... Dead Mike's a Buccaneer, Gaspard's a Buccaneer, Burgess Latro is a Buccaneer, um, Milo Greytail's a Swashbuckler, and then Lucky Jack is a Privateer. So, depending on like what you want, if you if you are a class like Witch Doctor and Privateer, which uh, buffs Will, then I would say get Lucky Jack because he is a Privateer, which will also get buffed by Will. Um, if you're a Buccaneer, then you can really pick any of the other three Buccaneers. I would recommend uh, Burgess Latcher. I think he's the best of the three um, because you can buff strength. It's going to buff him up and do more damage and have a better chance to crit, obviously with the strength buff. Um, and then if you're a Musketeer or a Swashbuckler, which gives you the ability to buff agility, 100% pick Milo Greytail. He's actually probably the best Presidio companion, in my opinion. Um, so yeah, that, that's what I would say about those. Secondly, you have your uh, Pirate's uh, birthplace, which is going to be shown in this graphic right here. And you have the option of Skull Island, which gives you Born Sneak plus 5 Dodge. Grizzleheim, which is naturally tough, a 5% health increase. Krakatopia, naturally spooky, which is a 5% spell power increase. Marleybone, which is keen eyes and a 5 uh, accuracy increase. And then you have Mushu, which is Born Warrior and a plus 5 weapon power increase. Uh, there's really only two of these that I would even go for. The main one being Krakatopia, picking naturally spooky. That 5% uh, spell power bonus that you get... It's gonna just it's gonna be so good toward the end game if you're a musketeer, witch doctor, or privateer. That five percent spell power increase is gonna make your bombs, mojo storm, blood flames, uh, do just so much more damage. It's gonna be so good. I'm telling you that that's the best one to get if you're those classes. And then if you're like a melee class like swash or witch, or sorry, swash or buccaneer, then um, I'd say just maybe go with the um, born warrior just to give you that extra five weapon power. It, you know, can't really hurt. And since you're not gonna be using spell power, you know attacks then it's just you know it's good to have that extra five weapon power in my opinion i would say um next i want to talk about mounts now pirate 101 unfortunately doesn't have any mounts you can purchase any permanent mounts you can purchase with gold um the only ones you can purchase with gold are going to be from this guy over here um they're going to be one day rental mounts for 2,000 gold each and you know they're not it's like you know it's not even it's not really a lot of gold you know it's, it's pretty accessible um it just sucks that they're one day rentals and um, you can also get free to play mounts by uh, during like holiday events like Christmas in July, uh, Christmas, and then also like Halloween ish stuff like that. Um, you can get the mounts that like drop from the little presents that are going to be like under this. There's like a big tree that'll be right here over Christmas, and like you can get the seven day rental mounts from this uh, these presents that spawn here, some over here, just all throughout Skull Island. There's presents that have uh, seven day mounts. Um, it just sucks that, you know, if you want a permanent mount, you're going to have to either open packs or just straight up buy it from the crown shop or get it as a drop, which can suck because mounts like don't like to drop from fights a lot of the time. Um, and there's like not really like a, there's not really like a ton of fights that drop like permanent mounts. Like I would say Kane is one um, drops a lot of the clockwork steed mounts. Uh, 
you have the Dutchman, Obsidian Dutchman that drops the Parrot Mounts. I can't really think of any off the top of my head right now, but that is the that is the only free to play way um, to get permanent mounts. But you can't buy them for gold, which sucks, like you can in Wizard One Hundred One. Um, but yeah, lastly, I want to talk about pets. Um, pets in Power One Hundred One are completely optional to have while questing. Um, like in Wizard One Hundred One, I'd recommend to have a pet like when you start a playthrough. But Power One Hundred One, you really don't need one. It's just not as like an, a necessity as it is in Wiz. Um, if you're an experienced player and you want to have a pet, go for it. Uh, you know, if it's going to help like a little bit, you know, in early game and stuff like that with the epics that you, you can get from it and the powers and stuff. But if you're new to the game and you like think that you need a pet, you really don't. You can quest through and it's not really going to make that much of a difference. So just wanted to put that out there and, and get the, uh, the basic things like that out of the way. And now I'm going to move on to some other things that you should know about uh, the game. All right. So next I want to talk about companions. Now, obviously, you get companions as you're leveling up through the game. Um, you also get training points, which are shown right down here as you level up through the game. Ideally, the goal with training points is you want to build them up and save them so that you can get good value out of each use while you're leveling up your pirate. So an example for a good value is going to be, let's say we go look at Duck Holiday right here. He's level 56. Now, my pirate is level 70, so there's like, you know, there's a big level gap there. Um, if I hover over the train button, I'm going to see that he's going to get four levels from this one training point. So this is very good value here because I'm using one training point to get four levels. Now, on the other hand, if I hover over Hawkeyes right here, he's level 68. He's very close to my pirate level. Uh, you can see him. He's only getting, like, barely half a level with one training point. So this would be bad value. Now, obviously, he's level 68. I'm level 70. The max level 70. I really can't bridge. I can't increase the gap. So when you get higher level companions like this, it's just going to cost more training points to level them up. But, you know, when you're lower level, as you're leveling up, you know, let your companions fall behind a little bit and then, you know, build up the training points and then use them when you can get good value like this. Secondly, I want to go over epics. So epics are things that give your companions more abilities and attacks while in combat. So for example, with Chantal, she has her obviously, you know, her sniper shots, her super strike. Um, but she also has these things which you can train for her. And you have double tap, you have burst fire, and overwatch. So like basically, for example, double tap, whenever she gets a crit, um, she actually gets an, an extra attack. So like she, she gets a super hit, and then after that hits over, she gets to chain again with double tap. And, you know, this this right here, Double Tap 2, Burst Fire 2, Overwatch 3, this is going to be like, you know, your pretty standard generic Musketeer build, what you're going to want to go for on most Musketeer companions. And then, like, with Swashbuckler, you're going to want Blade Storm, uh, Relentless, Repost, all, like, these three are really good generic uh, epics to get on Swashbuckler. And then on Buccaneer, though, you're probably going to want something like Vengeance Strike, um, Relentless, and Blade Storm, stuff like that for Buccaneer. And then even on, um, on like, Witch Doctor, like, for Old Scratch, like, I gave him Improved Mojo Blast 3, I gave him Mojo Echo 3, Witch Hunter 2. You can probably give him Mojo Echo 2 and Witch Hunter 3, that's probably be a better build. But like, stuff like that, because Old Scratch really isn't going to be hitting. He's going to be using his buffs here, and he's going to be using his, uh, you know, his attack right like this. Even with Gracie, do Gracie's really just used for her mine and stuff like that. So like, I gave her this build right here, Second Chance, Blade Storm, Vengeance Strike. But like, you know, it's not that, it's, it's not that like necessary, but like, you know, with Companions like Chantal and Rodolfo, they're going to be hitting a lot. The epics are kind of important. Lastly, I want to talk about talents. Talents are the things you see right down here below. Talents, uh, they give an increased stat boost to your companions. So, like, basically, this rough four, as you see right here, it's going to give him a total of increased 40 weapon power. Tough four gives uh, an increase to 510 health. And then accurate three gives 10 accuracy. Dodge three gives three or 10 total dodge. So like these these are good uh, talents to get for like a swashbuckler. And then on Chantal, you know, rough four, tough four, accurate four, and then I gave her agility four because she's based off of agility. And that's going to help her crit more and just do a little bit more damage. So th this is going to be, you're always going to want to have, if you see all my companions, I always have, I have rough four, tough four, rough four, tough four. Like rough four and tough four is like, go for that. That's, that's what you need. And then like, you know, with the Contessa, I went with, you know, accurate four, dodgy four and didn't really focus on the agility. Whereas, like, you know, for someone like Bonnie, I, I focus on the agility and not really the dodge. Because Splashbucklers, they get better value from dodging with repost. So I'd rather have her dodge up and not worry about her agility too much. You know, it, it's all kind of objective, but really you, you need rough four and tough four for just that extra health and extra weapon power. It's going to be really good. Also, one more thing about companions. Uh, like, for Old Scratch and most Witch Doctors, um, I, you give them Spooky Four. Spooky Four to give 20% uh, extra spell power added to your stats. It's just really good for like abilities that you know go off of spell power like Jobu's Kiss. It damage scales upon the amount of spell power you have. 
So that's just just Spooky Force is really good also like for Witch Doctors and even for like Gracie too, who uses her mind, which is based off spell power. I gave her Spooky Four also, so the mind just does a little bit more damage too. Just also another good thing to note. Next up, I wanted to give just kind of like a brief uh, overview on practice points. And practice points, you get them right down here. You can see how many you have. You get them from questing and from leveling up and also doing Zeke quest. These can be used to train powers and abilities from trainers other than your own specific class trainer. So like, just wanted to kind of give you guys a general sense on like, you know, when and where to use them and include them on the guide for that reason. So first up, I want to talk about the secret trainer that, you know, not really a lot of people know about if they're like a new player. Um, so the secret trainer is located here in the end of Doublefish Hollow at the very end. And you go into this little trap door down here and there's going to be three different secret trainers. The current one right now is going to be the magic trainer. So you have the magic trainer, you'll have the melee trainer, and then you'll have the musketeer trainer. So these three trainers, they rotate every hour, like I said, um, and they give some pretty good abilities. Like for example, the witch doctor trainer, I've already trained it, but they, uh, this, this trainer allowed me to get um, readied spell too. You can train two ranks of readied spell from the witch doctor trainer. I can find it over here. Oh uh, yeah, readied spell. So I was able to train readied spell too from the witch doctor trainer. Um, and then, for example, like the melee trainer allows you to trade um, relentless. That's probably one of the best ones you can get from the melee trainer. And then the um, ranged or the musketeer trainer allows you to train a rank of burst fire, and then it allows you to train two ranks of Overwatch. So, you know, some some pretty good um some pretty good talent or epics that you can train from these these trainers. So those are very good to use practice points on. And then you also have some good ones to use in Skull Island on the original trainers, like for example Spooky. Let me pull up my powers again and stuff. Um, for example, I trained um, Spooky 2 on my Musketeer with my um, practice points from the Witch Doctor Trainer. This allows me to get an extra 15% spell power. Um, I trained Staffy weapons too because I'm a hybrid Musketeer and I use a shooty Staffy weapon. Um, and this allows me to just get a little bit of extra weapon power for when I hit. And then the spell power it helps me to increase the damage of Blood Flames, you know, bombs big guns, all that kind of stuff. Just a little bit extra, but you know, it, a little bit adds up and stuff like that. So yeah, you can also get things like uh, hides. You can train like, you know, this from the privateer trainer, like a little heel, uh, even this like Valor Shield from the privateer trainer. You can train elusive from either the musketeer or the privateer trainer. Um, you can train fast, which gives you extra movement range from the swashbuckler trainer. And um, just, you know, there's a lot, a lot of good things you can get with practice points and stuff like that. And just wanted you guys to kind of get like a general sense on kind of what you can use those on and stuff. All right, last thing before we get into the actual gear part of this guide, I wanted to go over ships. Just because I feel like ships is like a really neglected part of the game. Um, first off, you have your ship upgrades. You, so you start off with a raft, you get that at like level 4, something like that. You upgrade to a Skull Island Frigate at level 10. Level 15, 16-ish, you get the, uh, the Mon Keystone Skiff. Um, and then you actually don't get another ship until you complete Cool Ranch at level like 35-ish and you get that Mushu skiff. And then the, actually the game does not give you any more ships after that. So um, I like to kind of upgrade in between. I'll usually upgrade my ship in Cool Ranch and get like a Cool Ranch frigate or like a Cool Ranch galleon or something like that. Um, and then once I get past Mushu, I'll get like a Marley Bone ship and then I'll get an Aquila ship. And then I wanted to show you these guys um, right here. This guy in Florenza docks. He's going to give the best ships in the game. Um, which are like these right here. You have the Spiral Galleon, level 70. This is this is going to be the best um, the best ship you can really get in the game here. Um, and then his guy, this other guy right over here, is going to give some of the best ship parts in the game, um, like you know anchors, best cannons with damage, best best armor for each of the ships. Um, some oh, the figureheads are not that good. Um, gives a good gives an okay wheel, and you know just just good stuff like this. It also gives I think it gives um. Yeah, it gives, it gives the Wings of Chaos, which is one of the best wings, uh, the best uh, sails in the game, too. Um, and, yeah, so that's kind of what you're going to want to get for, like, a max level ship. But, you know, just kind of upgrade your ship along the way as you go. You don't have to do it in the order that I said. But, you know, just kind of, once you feel like it's harder to defeat ships, um, just try and see if you can upgrade and get a new ship. And then, obviously, get this ship when you get to max level. Secondly, I wanted to talk about this, too. Um, in order to upgrade your nautical level... While you're questing through the game, put your companions on tasks. So go here and you want to do new orders and you want to put the companions that you're not using on sailing. Like right here, this is going to just like, you know, AFK pretty much. AFK give your pirate nautical XP so you can level up and you can get better ship gear and better ships quicker. 
it's just gonna help it's just gonna help like tremendously if you do that so just set all your companions that you're not using if you're not a max level and you're not a max nautical level um, just set all the companions that you're using to doing the sailing task right here that's just gonna be so beneficial for you um, and lastly I wanted to talk about like sheer ship gear and powers so if we go and unbottle my ship here um, it's already unbottled okay um, if we look at my ship equipment um, it's like as you see I have a horn right here this this horn is the horn of the ice lords it's a good horn you don't have to get this specific horn but if you look here it says 3.5 times uh, ship attack damage um, that basically is just gonna do like it's gonna your damage that you're gonna do with that horn is gonna be you know that you see this damage right here it's just gonna multiply that by three pretty much or 3.5 and this is one of the highest damage horns you can get in the game like a 3.5 damage horn um, is one of the highest you can get I think there's a 3.75 um, which is a, just a really rare drop um, and then you have your figurehead too which you know you can also get a 3.5 damage figurehead as well to give you these two attack powers that do 3.5 times damage but obviously these are like when you get to higher level as you can see this one's like level 54 plus this one's level 42 plus so you can start getting these like once you get around there um, but like before that just try and find horns that give you the highest you can at your level and figureheads that give you the best kind of damage you can at uh, your current level too but that's all I'll pretty much say about ships. Ships is not like a you know major facet of the game. It's more so like you know the the on land combat and stuff like that. But I want to just give like a brief over overview so you guys kind of understand it. But yeah, we're gonna go ahead and get into the gear aspect of things next. All right, so starting off with level one, we're gonna go ahead and go in here to the Skull Island Bazaar, and we're gonna go actually head over to the uh, Black Market over here, which is to the right, and we're gonna go through this door. The Black Market is a little shop uh, with the currency that uses scrip. Um, so if you are a new pirate, you're not really going to have this currency. But if you are a returning pirate and you have like a max level character, you'll probably have some of this. So you can go check this guy out before you go to a new playthrough. He's got three good pieces of gear. He's got the uh, Master Smuggler's Cow for Mojo Mastery. Um, he's got Master Smuggler's Visor for Weapon Mastery. And then he's got the uh, Master Smuggler's Greaves for Fast. Um, these two are probably going to be good for melee classes for that bonus m movement range and bonus weapon power. Whereas this one's going to be better for like Musketeer, Privateer, Witch Doctor, those who use spell power attacks for the most part. Um, but yeah, that's what I would say for the Black Market are probably the three best pieces. But now we'll move on to the Bazaar. And the Bazaar is probably going to be good for level 1 all the way up through 65 if you don't want to like farm gear before level 65. You can run with the Bazaar gear all the way up. Yes, you can. So what you'll do is go in here and let's say I want to find a hat. Let's say I'm a level 15 musketeer. I want to find a hat, for example. I'll click usable. I will sort by level, sort by class. So now I get all the musketeer stuff. Scroll through a little bit. Get down to level 15. And ideally for the hat, robe, and boots, the main two stats you're going to want to look for is, in my case, for musketeer, I want weapon power and agility. Now, if it was a buccaneer or like a swashbuckler um, or like a witch, witch doctor or privateer, I'd want different uh, like will for a privateer and witch doctor, and I'd want strength instead of agility for the buccaneer. But weapon power is still going to kind of remain the constant. So for musketeer, I'm going to look through and see level 15 gear. So like, you know, this one, not really what we're looking for. This one, not really. This one, is, this one is. So Gunner Stetson, six agility, two weapon power, level 15. That's probably what you're going to what you're going to want to see. Um, Buccaneer, you'd see strength instead of that. Um, Witch Doctor, you'd see will instead of that. Um, agility. And so, yeah, that's pretty much what you're going to want to look for. And lastly, I want to talk about the weapon. So, literally, for the weapon, you're just going to sort for, by level, find the level range that you want, um, and then you're going to find the weapon that has the most weapon power for what kind of weapon you want. So, let's say I want a shooty weapon, or let's say I want, actually, let's say I want a stabby weapon. I'll go for level 50 if I'm level 50 and I'm like okay let's see which one has the most this is a stabby weapon with 174 if I scroll over some more um, let's see if there's any others um I don't know if there's any um this one is 168 that's a stabby weapon um but yeah so pretty much you can just kind of see okay this one's going to have the most so I'll go ahead and get that for level 50 and then with the bazaar just you know check every five levels it's going to it's going to increase every five levels 5 10 15 etc um, and it starts from level zero, so you can get gear as early as level one. So, yeah, that's what I'd say for the bazaar. Now we'll move on to the gear that actually kind of you can farm for while you're questing up the game if you choose to do that. All right, so getting into level five. So this gear is obtainable at the end of each of the three rats quests, so like the final dungeon for each of the three rats quests. The first one, as you can see, is when you do Manny's quest, you get to the Pyramid of Fire. 
and this gear is dropped by all three of the final bosses of these dungeons it's a guaranteed drop so the first one is going to be the Aztecosaur boss which is you get a ring from this one it's a guaranteed drop per fight um, and these these uh, these rings give two things they give a like a item card and then they give like a talent or like a talent like an epic sort of thing um, so as you can see this one the onyx Aztecosaur ring gives us a critical mastery and then a mighty charge and then this one gives us a rouse and a mojo mastery so this one right here is going to be one of the best ones we can get for uh like a witch doctor a privateer a musketeer because the mojo mastery is so good and the rouse is actually really good for the having that heal too um there's also other versions like you could get a mojo mastery and a um sniper shot you can get a mojo mastery and a ghost whale um all sorts of stuff like that too i can show you like so there's some of these too like you can get a sniper shot and increase base agility you can get a weapon mastery and a mighty charge weapon mastery a sneak attack like this one right here critical mastery sneak attack um all these that i'm kind of showing you are, are like some of the best ones you can get like the once again the rouse and mojo mastery um but yeah these are like kind of all ones to look out for there are there are some that are that are pretty bad but like what I'm showing you here is there's some really good ones like the weapon mastery one's really good for melee classes um but once again the mojo mastery one's really good for those you know classes that use the spell power items and stuff like that and I'll show you what like the sigils for like the other ones so this is the pyramid of fire for Manny's quest um and let me just show you the other two real quick this one right here is going to be the prawn dungeon and he drops the uh necklaces at the end once again another guaranteed drop he drops the uh the shrimpy necklaces right here just like the Aztecosaur or the Pyramid of Fire one dropped the Aztecosaur rings and then you have this last one right here which is the Dutchman's uh, ship the final one of the three rat quest bosses um, and this one drops the totem and once again just to clarify or sorry this is the ch whatever the charm I guess J just to clarify um, you can get the same thing like as you can see at the Dutchman Sapphire Charm is the same thing as the Sapphire Aztecosaur Ring you can get the same thing across the board so each of these final dungeons drop like have the same drop pool the only thing that changes is just the fact that this is a ring and that this is a totem like you can get the same powers and stuff from all of these and just to reiterate this this gear is actually really worth farming for at level five it's very good gear to have and in some cases i mean you can use this all the way up until level 70 and still use it as a max level pirate because on some of my pirates i still have like i'll have like you know this weapon mastery still on my pirate like using this because it's just a good thing that it's just really good to have or like you know having this uh, mojo mastery still at max level which is really good to have so this is the level five gear i'd recommend and I think the Dutchman is the only one that you can actually cabin, so you can you don't have to do the dungeon over again to farm it. Um, so this is probably the easiest one to farm because you can since you can cabin the Dutchman. But yeah, I mean these are just going to be the the best three things you can get at level five right here, and I would recommend farming them because they are very very good. All right, the next piece of gear I wanted to make note of is going to be a level fifteen dungeon called Bruno Chapel. This is at the end of Valencia Part One, and you're going to fight Fool's Guards. And this fight is actually going to drop a really good weapon for Witch Doctor called Fool's Wand. Um, it gives 6 range. And yeah, I know it doesn't give a lot of weapon power um, because it's a level 10 weapon. But you can still you can use this weapon up until level 70 as a Witch Doctor because it gives you 6 range added to your uh, current range as a Witch Doctor. And you can get, I think it's up to 7 range for your Mojo Blasts or Mojo Storms and that just it is basically covers the whole map so this this one is actually really good for the range it also gives you a witch hunter ability too so um this is what i'd recommend farming for here it's a very quick fight you can do you can the drop rates aren't terrible for this wand and you know it's definitely 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 worth as a witch doctor all right gonna jump straight into level 20 gear we're gonna be talking about a santa rana's hat so starting off santa rana's hat gives a rank of overwatch and it is pretty much essential for overwatch 5 build on a pure musket at max level and it's just a really good piece of gear um, if you want it. I mean, I'd recommend farm for it because um, it drops from both places where you fight Santorana. It drops from the Castillo Sapo dungeon. Um, and then it also drops from the banquet hall, which is right behind El Toro's house. Um, if you're farming for it, farm this sigil because it is just a one fight and it's really easy. Um, so farm for it here. But yeah, I mean, Santorana's hash is very good to have at level 20. It gives you Overwatch and you can use it at max level for uh, Overwatch 5. 
All right, next we have the Duck of Death. So um, the Duck of Death drops uh, some good gear. Uh, he drops his own gear, so like he drops his jacket, and this, this jacket is actually really good for pure musketeer at level 20. Um, it gives you the true grit ability, which uh, whenever an, a ranged enemy hits you, you get to fire back at them pretty much. And then uh, he also drops his weapon, the Death Dealers. I'll put an image up on screen of those. Um, but they provide the ability of uh, burst fire. So those are, those are pretty good, too, to have at level 20 for a musketeer. And then um, this this dungeon, Boot Hill, you fight him twice, so they have a chance to drop twice. Um, as well as just other, like, level 20 gear that's, like, pretty good. Like, there's there's some pieces of level, of level 20 gear that drop that just have some good, like, abilities on them. And stuff like that. So, like, if you get a piece that, like, looks good, then, like, you can probably use it for level 20. Um, you can also get this gear from the, the Silver Stallion ship that you fight um, the Duck of Death on. And then you have to defeat the fires and like and get the free ranger back. Um, that also this stuff drops from here too. So you get three separate instances. But if you're gonna farm, I'd say probably farm the silver stallion because it's a quicker fight, and you can just kind of get get off the ship and, and get back on it. Um, but also this this dungeon right here too, you can um, farm it as well if you if you prefer, um, because you just you can do two fights back to back. So either one. But yeah, English Bill drops some good stuff, or the Duck of Death drops some good stuff. So for level twenty. All right, now we come to level 35. This is going to be the second to last dungeon of Cool Ranch and is the infamous Miranda dungeon where you fight Captain Blood. Now, the best item from here is going to be, of course, Captain Blood's jacket. The jacket gives blood flames along with uh, 8 will and 8 strength. Um, blood flames are going to be amazing on Witch Doctor, Privateer, and Musket. You can get them on Swash and Buccaneer, but I mean, ideally you're going to want them on uh, Witch Doctor, Privateer, and Musketeer. Um, they're just such a good ability, and it's just it's just the best piece of gear from this dungeon, of course. Um, but also, most of the gear that does drop from blood also gives good stats and abilities as well, and that can be pretty helpful for all classes. For example, um, we have the Matador's headgear like this. gives a Valor's armor, 10 agility for Musketeer. Um, you have the Dragoon's heavy boots like right here. Um, they give 10 strength and a walk in darkness for Buccaneer. Pretty good. Um, and it also has the chance to drop... Um, one of these crown shop eye patches i'm pretty sure it's the dead eyes patch captain blood actually can can drop this eye patch which is like really good i mean it's a free crown shop eye patch that he can drop so i mean like blood's drop pool is pretty good but obviously the main one that people are going to go for is captain blood's robe um so if you want to farm for it um i'd say maybe run it a couple times you know because you have to go through the whole dungeon pop the chest once or twice if you have the crowns to do so um because blood's jacket is such a good piece of gear and it can make quests into the game so much easier one last piece of gear to note for the level 35 category is going to be the weapon that you get for completing Cool Ranch um, or completing the Motherload Mine dungeon where you fight Deacon. Um, this weapon for is going to be only for Musketeer. Um, you get it for completing the quest. It's called the Old Quigley. This weapon is actually really, really, really good. You get 120 weapon power, 5 range, and you get 2 sniper shots. It's just an amazing weapon for a, for a level 35 musketeer. That would say make sure you use this once you get it for turning in the quest to Avery after completing Cool Ranch. It's just, it's just a really good piece of gear. So I wanted to put this on there too. Alright, now moving into the level 40 through 45 category. Um, up first we have General So, which is level 40. And um, he is going to be the final boss you fight at the end of the Kotan dungeon. And he drops some good gear just to, to keep note of. I mean, it's, it's, it's pretty good gear for level 40, especially for uh, some examples I'm going to show you for Musketeer and Witch Doctor. Um, for Musketeer, he drops the Flame Kami's Veil, which gives the big guns and 11 agility. It's just a pretty good hat. I mean, if you get this drop, definitely use it for a, a Musketeer. And then for Witch Doctor, you get the Geomancer's Hat, which gives you 11 will and then also a big guns copy. And big guns is just really good to have. It's a really good ability. It gets buffed by spell power. I mean... These are, these are two pieces to look out for from General So, but he also has other gear that's pretty helpful and gives like abilities like this for uh, all the different classes too. So, so good stuff to look out for, not necessarily to like, you know, farm at this level. But I mean, if you want to, go for it. But if you don't, you just keep on questing and stuff. All right, up next, we have the Metal and Water Guardian. Um, this is the Metal Temple right here. And then right behind it over here um, is the Water Guardian's Temple. Um, both of these bosses have a pretty similar gear drop um, pool. And just a few examples of, of good gear that you can get from these these bosses are going to be the, um, let's see, Vanguard's Greaves for um, Buccaneer. They give a Super Strike, 7 armor. Pretty good boots, I would say so, for uh, Buccaneer. Um, and then you also have the Earth Shoes for a Privateer. gives a Mojo Storm and 11 Will. Pretty good for that. Um, and then also one of the best pieces of gear for Swashbuckler, too, is going to be the uh, Shalinquan Vestment. I don't know if I said that right, if I butchered that, whatever. 
Um, but it gives 11 agility and a revive card. So really good heal, good agility. I mean, this is a good rogue for the uh, swashbuckler too. Um, and yeah, I mean, those are three examples. They, they have a lot, they have a lot more gear in their pools than I showed you that they give good items cards for, uh, for all the classes in the game pretty much. Um, so yeah, good stop at the very end of Mushu right here. If you want, if you're looking for some extra, some gear to maybe farm for a little bit, cause they are just one fight. Um, but if not, you just, you know, keep on, keep on, keep on moving through the game. All right. So entering the level 50 to 55 range, um, we have the final dungeon of Marleybone, the wreck of the victory where you fight Rook. Um, this dungeon actually has a lot of good drops worth noting or, you know, looking out for or keeping if you get. Um, for example, I'm put up on the screen. We have the Arms of the Valiant. Um, it gives an Assassin Strike for Buccaneer. We have the Swami Slippers, which give uh, big guns for Witch Doctor. And then we have the Eye Patch of Recuperation, which gives a really good heal for Witch Doctor as well. Um, these are just three examples. Um, there's a lot of other gear uh, that's dropped from this dungeon that, that could be really good too, I mean, for a lot of classes. So... Definitely when you're farming this, you get to fight Rook twice, so be on the lookout when you defeat him if you get any of these uh, drops or you know any piece of gear that gives some good uh, item cards on it. All right, entering the level 60 gear range. This gear is going to be kind of pretty much just all Aquila gear. Um, there's actually a lot of good little spots here that you can get some good gear that is really used can be used at max level. Um, starting off with the Eyes of the Cobra, I actually don't have this item, but this is farmed from the boss Mari in the Dungeon Shory right here when you go into this wooden mouse. Um, I'll actually show you where like what room it is in because it, I'm going to be transitioning to the next P item after this. You'll go into this room um, and in here you do a fight, go up and turn the little gate lever and then you'll fight Mari. If you fight her and defeat her last, she'll respawn over and over again where you can farm this uh, Eyes of the Cobra. It's a really good Buccaneer piece for a uh, first strike. Um, secondly, we're going to go over to the Palace of Hysteric and this is where you can get the drop, um, the Prince of Ilios Quiver right here. So I will show you what it is. And this is a really, really, really good piece of gear if you want to do like a hybrid swashbuckler, hybrid buccaneer, and go shooty slashy, shooty stabby, something like that. Um, but yeah, it's just really good. Gives burst fire, accuracy, weapon power, really good piece of gear. Um, you can cabin um, Paris if you go all the way through the dungeon, then go back to a 30 minute cabin on Paris's fight. Or you can just run it normally. Um, it, it's Paris is the second fight of the dungeon, so it's not too hard. Um, but yeah, moving on to Manticore Sting next. All right, so Manticore's Sting is going to be a piece of gear given by the boss Axwar, and it's a little side quest. You literally go to Achaea, and you're over in Seder Grove. You're going to talk to Sylvanus right here. He's going to give you the side quest, and you're literally just going to run over to this cave right here, and I'm pretty sure it's just one fight. You can skip the first fight, and then you go and you fight Axwar. You get that um, Manticore Sting from him. It's actually a pretty, pretty good drop rate. Um, gives repel border seven web power. This is primarily used for a uh, privateer if you want to go with uh, the repel five build, which actually knocks back the enemies a space if you hit them with repel borders. Um, so it's a really really good piece of gear. Um, if you're questing through Aquila and you you want to just grab it on a privateer real quick, I mean it's it's a pretty pretty quick farm, um, and it's a very very useful piece of gear at max if you're trying to go with the uh, the slashy privateer repel five build. All right, next we have the dungeon Talos. This dungeon can drop uh, two pieces of gear that are very, very, very good. Um, starting off with the Ring of Hawkeyes right here. This Ring of Hawkeyes uh, is dropped from Talos himself, and it is just, it's just—it's one of the best rings you can get from Musketeer because it gives big guns, which have unlimited range and do a lot of damage when buffed by spell power, and gives an additional 15 accuracy, which is really, really good. Um, the, the drop rates of this are said to be really, really bad, um, so... Yeah, if you want to farm for it, Talos is a good spot. There's also, you can farm for it uh, with the boss Xena in Achaea. Um, she drops it too. Uh, but yeah, this is a this is definitely a tough farm. Um, but you can cabin Talos and you can farm for this ring. Um, next, we have the Sword of Talos for Buccaneer. This is a level 60 weapon that gives Bladestorm, which is, and 223 weapon power too, which is really good for level 60. Um, so yeah, if you want to if you want to get a, a weapon that gives Bladestorm to try and get Bladestorm 5 a little bit early um, For your pirate then then oh, by all means go for it farm it. it It's definitely probably worth the farm. It's a good. It's a good weapon um, It's I don't think it's as rare as ring of Hawk, but yeah, it's, it's still a good weapon last on the level 60 pieces of gear We have the axe of the Minotaur Lords dropped from the labyrinth dungeon um, This axe is is really good for Buccaneer as well 223 weapon power once again and gives follow through which is basically relentless but it's just a duplicate of relentless but it doesn't actually stack with relentless but it's it's still really good it's a really good ability um 
this axe a lot of people pe people get it easily for me it was a it was a tough drop um but this axe uh is has a chance to drop six times throughout this dungeon because you it drops by each of the minotaurs when you fight them and then it drops in e any of the three chests that you get dropped when you do the final fight against all three of the minotaurs so a total of six chances to get this weapon dropped and it's it's, it's a good it's a good weapon i mean I, if you really want it i recommend one, running through maybe the labyrinth one extra time uh if you want to get it just so you have 12 chances to get it dropped um but yeah if you don't obviously if you're speed questing or whatever you know don't worry about it but this is a good this is a really good weapon if you want to just like you know up your damage and get a little extra epic talent at level 60 so yeah all right, we come to the moment a lot of you guys have probably been waiting for. Level 65, the Tower of Moo Manchu. This is a staple dungeon in Pirate 101. This massive tower we have in, uh, in Mushu. Um, it is accessible at level 55 from a side quest from Lord Shagatai. You have to do um, his first side quest in Subata where you get it from him. And then he, after you complete that, then you get the access to the tower. Um, the there's gear for every single class in this tower that I'm going to recommend. I'm going to go through all of that. Um, up first being the tower gear, um, and this gear is gained from the uh, nefarious fight, the Mu Manchu fight, uh, other fights in the tower, um, and then it also is gained from these gauntlet chests that are uh, on the way up. You, there's two of them. They take four players to unlock, and they guarantee a piece of gear from level 55 through 65. Um, the level 65 gear being the best gear you can get. So let me go ahead and show you what you can and I want on all the classes. So for Musketeer, you're going to want the hat at level 65. You're going to want the robe and you're going to want the totem, which is the Jewel of Mementu. This is because all of these give Hail of Cannonballs, um, which is just really good. The bombs that drop down, they do a lot of damage. And then they also leave behind bombs that do damage when enemies walk over them. Um, very very good the hat and robe give good agility the totem gives accuracy which is just you know all very good so you're gonna want these you're gonna want these pieces level 65 for musketeer and I even use this one at max level still so yeah there's that and I'm gonna go over the other four classes too I just not gonna have I don't feel like switching over to those characters to show you the gear but I'm gonna kind of show you what you're gonna want for each of those classes I'm gonna put images up on the screen for you um, for buccaneer the best pieces are probably gonna be the hat the totem and the ring the hat and the totem both give a vicious charge and a super strike, which is amazing. The ring gives a super strike and a um, Leviathan's Call, which, you know, are, is good. Um, there's, there's other rings that are probably better than this one, but at level 65, it is a good ring for that super strike. Um, for Privateer, you're going to want the ring, the boots, and the robe. Um, all of these items give the big guns ability. Big guns is just amazing to have as Privateer when you, um, you know, have your spell power buffs on. They're going to do more damage and they leave behind fire. When enemy walks over the fire, they, they get hit with extra damage. Very, very good. Also, they have infinite range. Um, and then the, the boots and the robe give a good will too, so increase the will. Uh, for Witch Doctor, the best piece is probably going to be the ring, the boots, and the necklace. Um, so you can see them on screen now. Um, they all give Mojo Storm. Mojo Storm is just amazing. Um, especially if you have a six range wand, you can get seven range on that Mojo Storm. And you can pr hit pretty much all the way across the map. And it obviously um, increases with the spell power buff as well. The damage on that does. And then uh, you get good will from the, uh, the boots. So yeah. Lastly, we have Swashbuckler. And you're going to want probably at level 65 the Corrupted Hat, the Ring, and then the Totem. The ring and totem give good weapon power and then, you know, assassin strike and plus the hide on the totem. And then the hat gives, you know, assassins and hide as well as some good agility on it. So those are those are probably going to be the tower pieces of gear you want. And um, lastly, we're going to go over the best drop of the entire game in the Tower of Mumanchu. And that is going to be the Imperial Boots of Mumanchu right here. The Tide Boots as the, uh, the street name for them. Um, but yes, yeah, so you get Frozen Tide which and 14 agility and 18 dodge. Um, this Frozen Tide is an amazing ability. Uh, I'd recommend this, these boots for Witch Doctor, Musketeer, and Privateer. Just because you can use Tide, um, you get an extra round of spell power buffs on you before the enemies are even able to start approaching. So it basically just gives you a free turn to buff up your spell power so you can hit for more damage uh, next turn without the enemies actually coming and attacking you in that first turn. I don't know, it's just a really, really, really good power. Um, best, once again, best on Musketeer, best on Witch and Privateer. Um, but yeah, this is, you know, <laughs> a, we've done the percentages. Um, it is a theorized 0.33% drop rate. Um, so yes, a third of 1% or one in 300 chance to get these boots. Um, very, very rare. 
Uh, the only gear I'd recommend farming at 65 is just the tower gear. If you happen to get these boots at level 65 as a drop, I mean, oh my goodness, that is just that's amazing. But if you don't, it's okay. You can always farm for them and waste your waste your life farming for these once you get to level 70. Um, but yeah, tower gear probably going to be the best at 65. Um, and then of course you have the uh, tie boots that, you know, yeah, tie boots. That's that, that's nothing else I have to say about that. All right, last thing I want to say about Mumanchu is I really recommend being able to farm this dungeon at level 65. Um, so whenever you get to level 55, I would say just go ahead and do the first side quest from Lord Shagatai in Tsubata. Um, do that so once you hit level 65, um, you can just go ahead and do the second side quest, which is basically to say and to come straight to the tower so that you can farm it at level 65 and get your tower gear and use it because... It's just, it's just really good gear to have. It's going to make your questing so much easier if you get this gear at level 65. Like, especially questing through Valencia Part 2. I, it's going to be so much easier. I just, I really, really, really recommend farming this dungeon at level 65 in order to, to get, uh, you know, most of the gear that you want, like, from the tower. I, I would just, I really would say that. All right, we have arrived at level 70, max level. The first dungeon I want to talk about is the Machine Core, a.k.a. Kane's Dungeon. Um, the items from this dungeon are going to be a little, like, you know, very minimal because there's just better items in the game um but for pure musketeer i want to start off with that we're going to start with the um i don't have a i don't have the item but the uh, nerja campaign hat gives 14 agility and it gives true grit and quick adjust a very very good hat if you're running pure musketeer for um that you know just the true grit and quick adjust are just very good abilities um next up we're going to have the totem the um fusilier's precisio stone um once again quick adjust true grit accuracy great abilities for pure musketeer and then i also don't have this item but it's the bresciani loop it's literally the exact same thing as the fusilier's precisio stone except it's a ring um gives the true grit gives quick adjust it's a very, apparently it's a really 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 rare item um but yeah so that that's really good for a pure musketeer next up we have some buccaneer gear and um that gear is going to be the brogans of the lydiar the, these are just boots that give a Triton's Chorus, which gives 25% um, damage reduction to like weapon, like uh, I think swords and stuff like that, to your teammate, so, or for your entire team, sorry. Um, and then it gives you 14 strength plus increased base strength, so just like a, a lot of strength for those boots. So they're pretty good, pretty good boots, I would say. And then last but not least, we have the Swash Robe, the Catania Mantle. Um, this, this gives 10 weapon power, 22 armor. I think it gives increased base dodge and agility. So, you know, it's pretty much just a stat robe. Um, it's a good one to get for free. You don't have to purchase anything from the crown shop for it. I mean, it's definitely not the best robe for Swash, but it could be a good one if you just really want, like, something if you want to farm Kane, um, or if you happen to just, you know, get it on while you're questing through the game and you you, you get this from Kane on your first time. Then, you know, it's a good robe for Swash to keep around and you maybe use it 70 for a little bit until you get a better robe. Um, but, yeah, that's pretty much it for Kane. All right, next up, we're going to be going over Sinbad Part 1, 2, and 3. For Part 1, it's going to be this dungeon in Devilfish Hollow, uh, Crusher's Lair. It's going to drop two things of uh, notable intent. It's going to be the um, Anchor Tanker and the Kraken's Breath set. Both of these images are going to be up on the screen. And they're both very, very good weapons. Um, Kraken's Breath set can be used for Hybrid Swash or Hybrid Buck. And the Anchor Tanker is for Pure Buck. Um, is Spirit, great weapon power. Um, yeah, these weapons are just great to get. All right, next up is going to be Sinbad Part 2. Um, this is the second part of the Sinbad quest line, obviously, and this is going to be the big dungeon of this one. Um, it's going to drop a few things worth of note. First of all, it drops five eye patches for five different classes. Um, all the eye patches are good. So first off, you have the Sinbad Gallant Stripes with the Sniper Shot weapon power. Very good for pure musketeer, just an all-around amazing eye patch. Um, secondly, we have the Sinbad's Daring Stripes, 10 spell power in the Maelstrom. Amazing for Witch Doctor, that spell power is just a, is a huge buff of spell power, really, really good. And then, of course, the Maelstrom to reduce movement is great. Um, you have the Sinbad's Daring Stripes, which give the charge and the 18 dodge for Swashbuckler. Amazing for Swash, honestly. Um, you have Sinbad's Bold Stripes, which gives the second chance um, for Buccaneer. Very, very good. Um, lastly, you have Sinbad's Heroic Stripes, very good for Privateer. Valor's Rampart gives a uh, Valor's Armor for every single person on the team, so it's really amazing. Um, next, they drop a really good totem, and it's called Sinbad's Silver Trinket. Um, silver or Gold Trinket, just the one that gives a uh, Readied Spell, like this one right here. Um, it allows you to get Ready to Spell 5 on um, a Privateer if you're doing Shooty Staffy, Musketeer if you're doing Shooty Staffy, and then you can get Ready to Spell 5 on Witch Doctor um, it, with certain builds. Very good uh, totem right here. 
Um, and then lastly, it drops, I don't have this item, but it drops this thing called Sinbad's Mojo Shooter. Um, it's a shooty staffy weapon um, that gives this ability right here called Albino's Mercy. And it's a, it's a really good weapon. Um, so yeah, all, all these things are definitely worth farming uh, in Sinbad Part 2. Alright, so Sinbad Part 3. Um, this is going to be the first dungeon right here, the Temple of the Flaming Skull. This is the first boss of the quest line for Sinbad Part 3. And this thing, this boss drops uh, three things worth of, um, you know, getting. Um, we have the Underworld Warlord's Hat. She has 8 spell power, 11 will. Very good for Witch Doctor, Privateer, um, even Musketeer too, for that matter. Um, you can use it for that. Probably best for Witch and Privateer though. Um, next we have the... Underworld Warlord's Boots. Once again, this can be used for Musketeer, Privateer, Witch Doctor. Very good. 8 spell power, another 11 will, and then the Reinforced too is a, is a great power. Um, and then we have the Lord of Trash Boots, or Bladestorm Boots. These are amazing for um, Swashbuckler and for Buccaneer. Very good. This allows you to get Bladestorm 5 without having to use it on your weapon. Um, so you can use a lot of other different weapons. For example, like the Anchor Tanker from Sinbad Part 1. Um, 8 weapon power, 11 strength for Buccaneer, 11 agility for Swashbuckler. Very, very good. Um, and then we have the magic wand right here. This is dropped from the final dungeon in uh, Sinbad Part 3. I'm not going to put that on the screen. But it's just like when you get to the very last uh, part of the quest, there's a whole dungeon in Marleybone. Uh, Bran drops this wand. It's probably going to be the, one of the best wands for Witch Doctor just because of the, the high weapon power and the 6 range. Um, and it's going to be an upgrade from Fool's Wand. So that's pretty much Sinbad Part 3 right there for you. All right, up next, I want to go over the Obsidian Key Bosses. So right here in Scrimshaw, you have the um, Obsidian Door, and this unlocks uh, like a bunch of different Key Bosses. Mainly the ones I'm going to be talking about is Obsidian Captain Blood, Obsidian Brass Monkey, and Obsidian English Bill. Um, so starting off, Captain Blood drops his Obsidian Jacket, which gives Blood Flames, of course, uh, one of the best pieces of gear probably for Witch Doctor, Musketeer, and Privateer in the game. Just a slightly increased stats from the Miranda Robe, still the same ability, so very, very good. Um, gonna have the Captain Blood's Obsidian Hook, which is amazing for Privateer in the Repel 5 build. Um, so that's probably what you want to go for if you're gonna run Repel 5. Uh, is Obsidian Hook, great drop from Blood. Next up, we're gonna go over the Brass Monkey. So Obsidian Brass drops three versions of his Brass Medallion. Um, you have the will-based one, you have the agility one, and then you have the strength one. All these three are great, great, great pieces. I even used this, I even used the will one for my will-based shooty staffy musketeer. Um, will one's good for Witch Doctor or Privateer. The agility one's good for Pure Musket or Swashbuckler. And then you have the strength one that's good for uh, Buccaneer. Um, lastly, I'll put a picture up of the um, Obsidian, Bills, uh, Obsidian English Bill's jacket. And that gives two ranks of True Grit, Quick Draw, and it gives some um, additional stats. It's a really good jacket for Pure Musketeer, so it's definitely worth the farm for that if you're running uh, Pure Musket. Um, and then you have the new key boss, which is the Obsidian Dutchman. It's located in a vortex in Monquista. This is, this is going to be what he looks like, uh, his little you know, area looks like. And it drops the Dutchman's inflated hat, which is very, very good for Wish Doctor, Privateer, or Musketeer. Um, it gives a copy of Tempest of Torpedoes, which are the knockback bombs. Do a lot of damage that scale off of spell power and, you know, just really good bombs to have. So that's probably the gear that you're going to want to farm at max level for uh, the Obsidian Key Bosses. Next up, I briefly want to go over the Salty gear that drops. Um, this gear is a gear that's on a monthly rotation. Um, so the main piece of gear you're going to want is the Salty Hats. Um, so every month, for one week out of the month, um, the this guy right over here, um, Jowsley, he's going to give you a quest that's going to give you a Royal Key. When you get the Royal Key, that's when you know it is the Hat Boss Week. Um, and you can farm the uh, the Key Bosses in here, which you can cabin by doing the 30 minute cabin. Um, and you can get these two different hats. Um, this one, the Salty Corsair's Tricorn, um, gives a Battle Zeal for Privateer with, with Will as well. Very, very, very good uh, hat here for Privateer. And then you also have the swashbuckler one the salty duelist tricorn which gives a black fog this hat is absolutely amazing so you have two copies of black fogs as a swashbuckler at max level which is absolutely amazing definitely 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 worth the farm um also one more thing to note is that you can go in and use your key on the level 10 door and if you fight that boss as a level 70 he still drops the level 70 hats so it's a much easier fight than doing the level 70 fight and you still get the same reward for it and finally, just want to go over a few more things, including the Dreadnought gear slash burns, weapons, um, as well as some crowns, bundle, and pat gear. 
So first off, I want to go over just like, so Dreadnought has about three weapons that are pretty good. Um, one of them being the uh, Haywire Swashbuckler set right here. Shooty Slashy gives a Haywire Strike, Haywire Shot. There's one that's a Shooty Stabby too, which gives the same abilities from the Haywire uh, Dreadnought. Um, these can be good on Hybrid Buccaneer, Hybrid Swashbuckler, stuff like that. And then you also have the Haywire Thunder Rifle right here. Very good weapon for your pure, for a pure musketeer. It gives that sniper shot, five range, and a lot of weapon power. So, you know, if you want something like that, that's a good farm from the uh, the Dreadnought. Um, next up, I want to talk about if you are a, a whale, <laughs> then you can purchase some crowns gear. Some good crowns bundle slash pack gear um, that's good to have at max level. Um, starting off is going to be the Hoodoo Bundle. Um, the Hoodoo Bundle can give you this robe right here, the Conqueror's Outfit which gives a rank of readied spell and it helps in the ability to make a readied five build for privateer, musketeer, and witch doctor if you're running a hybrid a hybrid privateer, a hybrid musketeer, or just regular witch doctor because you can get ready to spell five on all of those. Um, so a conqueror's robe is a great robe. If you're going to purchase a bundle, hoodoo bundle is probably going to be the best one to purchase. Um, next up, we have the patch of St. Fido from the crown shop. Um, this is probably going to be a really, really, really good eye patch uh, right here, the level 70 version. Um, just great stats, 11 weapon power, 14 accuracy, and dodge. Um, great eye patch for Swashbuckler, Buccaneer, and even Pure Musketeer can use Patch of St. Fido. Very, very, very good for um, for the uh, the stats. Very, very good. Um, next up, we have some pack gear that I want to talk about. Um, from the Ashes of the Armada pack, um, where is that? Right here. Um, there are three weapons that are definitely worth from this pack. Um, these weapons are going to be the Orb of Nefarious Death, which is what I'm using for my um, Hybrid Musketeer. Um, very, very good weapon. Gives double tap. Allows you to get double tap 5 on Musketeer, which is a, which is a really good um, epic to have. Um, next, we have the Craven Blade, which is good if you don't have Bladestorm boots. Um, Craven Blade is good to have to get Bladestorm 5 on your uh, Buccaneer. So very good. Very high weapon power of Bladestorm. Um, a step up from the Sword of Talos right there. Um, and then lastly, we have the Darkmoor Death Spitter. This allows you to get full range and then Overwatch for an Overwatch 5 build on Musketeer. Um, so if you want Overwatch 5, Darkmoor Death Spitter from the Ashes of the Armada pack is going to be the way to go. And lastly, just two more pieces of gear I want to mention. These are going to be from the Tribal Crew pack, which is right here. This, this pack right here, the Tribal Crew. Um, it's going to give you two pieces of gear. One of them being a hat called the Feathers of Inkle. This is going to be the best hat to go to for a will-based musketeer, which is what I'm using. Because as you see, it gives 16 will, which allows my character's will to have one more will than agility. So that I get um, spell power buffs. Because if you're based on will, you get spell power buffs. It's just a really good hat um, to get if you want to go with a um, will-based musketeer. Um, and then lastly, we have the Bakun Garb from the Tribal Crew, pra uh, tribal crew Pack. Sorry. Um, a weapon power, 16 strength, and 60 base armor. An amazing piece of gear. Um, this is this is good for um, Buccaneer. This is probably the best piece of gear for Buccaneer in the game, or best piece, best road for Buccaneer in the game. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much uh, that's pretty much all the gear. So yeah, that about that about does it for the video, everybody. Um, this was a lot of work. I had to go through a lot of different places, transfer a ton, a ton of gear over. Um, onto my musketeer from other characters um, and just you know to make sure I cover everything and all that so that you guys have something to, to go off of if you're trying to you know level up a new pirate or something if you're new or if you're returning just to kind of see the process of of what things to farm as at each level as you're going up and just some you know good tips to have I, I really hope that you guys uh, found this useful um, and once again it is the first video of its kind so maybe there will be more after it if we ever get a uh, you know <laughs> level increase praying to KI for that one um, but yeah, I, I uh, hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. Make sure you drop a, a like, a uh, comment down below if you found it uh, helpful. And then it would mean the world to me if you could subscribe and maybe come check me out on Twitch too. Over uh, Twitch is going to be linked in the description as well. But yeah, I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace.